Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. All month long, we've been examining how Latinos have been portrayed in films over the years. The festival is part of our ongoing series we call Race and Hollywood. And with me to help introduce these films, as he has been all month, is author and UCLA professor Sean Noriega. Sean is also the author of this really interesting book called Shot in America, Television, the State, and the Rise of Chicano Cinema. Welcome, Sean. Thank you, Robert. It's great to be here. Good to have you here. Well, our next film is called Greenwich Village. It's from 20th Century Fox, 1944, and it's also a TCM premiere. It also stars somebody I've been wanting to, from day one, to be able to introduce in a Fox musical on TCM, and that's the dazzling Carmen Miranda. Now, interestingly, Carmen Miranda is thought to be Brazilian. She's actually from Portugal, right? Yeah. And does a lot of Portuguese singing sometimes, which she was, talk about her a little, she was like incredible. She was a yeah. force to herself. She was. She was called the Brazilian Bombshell. She was born in Portugal, but uh, essentially raised in Brazil. And by the 1930s, became the most popular performer in South America. Right. And would then come to the United States, where she'd be the, one of the highest paid performers throughout the 1940s. And I wanted to somehow make sure that we could uh, include her right. as an example of the festival. But I've also tried to be very careful in distinguishing between films about U.S. Latinos and films about Latin Americans. But in here with Green Greenwich Village, we have an exception because, as it turns out, her character, while continuing to be a, very much a Carmen Miranda character, is identified as being born in Buffalo, New York. Okay. And it's about as improbable as anything else but in the film. The, but that's kind of the fun of her. Yeah, but we kind of go always, with it. <laughs> yeah, she was born in Buffalo, which she clearly wasn't. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, she'd sing songs like Chattanooga Choo Choo with yeah. the Portuguese accents. So. Yeah. Good. But she was so entertaining, so alive, so magnetic and everything. She kind of takes over the film. Uh, right. uh, the film itself has a fairly flimsy uh, storyline, but she just kind of plows through it. And in a way, and, and why I was interested in the film, is what she does with ethnicity is, I think, very informing. It's very liberating in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and it removes us from an issue of e authenticity versus stereotypes right. or racial masquerade. And her character throughout is playing all sorts of um, ethnic types. She's uh, gypsy, she's Irish, she's Samoan. She's from Buffalo. And essentially what her character is kind of putting forward is this notion that ethnicity is like a performance. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that uh, identity is really something that's based on mixture. And Carmen Miranda is mm -hmm. really a central part of yeah. uh, delivering that message. She was such, a, I think, a great ambassador for South America, even though she was from Portugal. And uh, made everybody love, you know, everyone loved Carmen mm -hmm. Miranda. She has that kind of personality mm -hmm. you just kind of embrace. Yeah. Everybody loved her. By the same token, her ethnic uh, persona also really kept mm -hmm. her from ever doing anything else. I mean, she was kind of yeah. trapped in that Carmen Miranda character, and she yeah. tried to do other things, but it r wasn't really allowed. And when she, mm -hmm. when she ever tried to veer away from that is kind of when her career faded a bit after a while. Yeah, and I think it's easy to look back at her as a stereotype, a stereotype par excellence. Uh, she would be uh, parodied and imitated uh, right. endlessly. But I think it's also important to just recognize uh, part of uh, the kind of liberatory impulse that comes behind that, right. the way in which this character upsets a lot of the conventions of storytelling and of narrative closure uh, that you would expect from films, and, and in some ways opens up other possibilities. Right. So glad you picked this film. Here's the movie starring Carmen Miranda, Donna Michi, William Bendix, and a lovely singer advertised at that time as the cherry blonde, Vivian Blaine, 1944, Greenwich Village. Well, I'm back with my co-host this evening, Chan Noriega, a professor at UCLA and the director of the UCLA Chicano Studies Research Center. I love this movie. I love that song, Whispering. That's such a nifty film. Yeah, it's interesting. It was the uh, kind of top song of 1920. And yeah. in some ways, the film's set in the early 1920s, and, and they're trying to be uh, historically accurate. Right. And one of the other ways they, they do that is the introduction of the Four Step Brothers, which mm -hmm. was an African-American flash tap and acrobatic group they got started in the 1920s with the Duke Ellington Orchestra. And they make uh, a somewhat uncredited appearance um, right. uh, in the film and help emphasize part of what the Miranda character is able to, to facilitate, which is a, a multiracial, multiethnic, uh, uh, diverse kind of environment within which people are being creative. Also, we should talk a little about Vivian Blaine, who'd come, I think she was a band singer. She made a few films at Fox early mm -hmm. on. And then Fox was trying to find another 
uh, girl to kind of be a threat to Betty Grable to keep Betty Grable yeah. in line, yeah. and she never really Vivian Blaine never really quite they made up, yeah. But she made uh, State Fair, yeah. and she was good in that. But she never really had a great success until Broadway with Guys and Dolls, yeah. and then she did the movie version of Guys and Dolls. So she had yeah. great success later in her career as a blonde. The studio really tried to push her yeah. in the marketing of this film, just really putting her out there as the next uh, the next female star. And of course, what happened is uh, it was a Carmen Miranda yeah. film. And, and then, of course, she had the misfortune. She also did a movie called If I'm Lucky and Dollface, both of which starred Carmen Miranda. So, yeah. <laughs> so Vivian Blaine, no matter where she went, there's Carmen Miranda, you know, just knocking them out out uh, of the ballpark. Uh, hard to come out from under her show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you see that Betty Grable didn't have Carmen Miranda in yeah. her films after <laughs> Betty became a big star. Anyway, good choice and a very entertaining choice. And we have more musicals ahead. And up next, another musical, this one from a far different kind of world. This is from 1961, a movie co-directed by Robert Wise and Jerome Robbins, and stars Natalie Wood. It's about two rival New York street gangs, the Sharks and the Jets.